Hello everyone, Alex RC Free here, coming at you with a video of my crate and ADS. I know it's been a super long time since I've made a video, since I've uploaded anything on the Moab. I kind of left you guys in the dark on that. I apologize. I did put it back together off camera. I seriously apologize for that. Um, please understand, my brother moved into my house, and let me just say, I was trying to help him out. He's a scumbag. That is literally the nicest way I can say it. And he's basically in a way it took over my house to where like my RC room in my house is pretty much non-existent anymore. So, um, yeah, that being said, it's really hard for me to have any, any space to do any RCing. So I'm at my best friend's house who I call my brother, the brother I actually want instead of my other, my real brother. And you can say what you want on that, but I'm just going to say it like it is. So I'm at his house in his RC room doing this video for you guys so what we're doing on this this is my crate made us um here uh, what we're doing is we're doing some upgrades here so these are rpm upgrades what shot you like so this is uh the uh, mud guards for the rear rpm arms part number eight zero six four two these are the guard mud guards and they look pretty good they're just keep in mind rpm is kind of you got to be careful with what you buy on rpm now look at that they're very thin and look at that you can bend them i'm not i'm not really not putting hardly any pressure on that i'm trying to show you guys like look at that i'm not even like i'm barely even pressing they're pretty flex i know some people are like oh they're just a mud guard they can they're designed to flex as plastic i want flex and plastic yeah but if you know they have factory arms on these you don't want flex that much you want a little bit of rigidity but i will say a lot of the RPM stuff that they've made for anything bigger than 1.8 scale has been garbage lately. And I, I genuinely do mean that. So, but these, actually, I have not ran them, so don't quote me. But these actually look like they're built really well. I'm not even going to lie. I actually got to give it to RPM. Like I say, if something's good, I'll, I'll talk about it. If it's not, I won't. But it actually looks like they really actually did a good job on doing these. So if you look, I know it's hard to see in the package. I'm going to take them out. But I see these two braces right here. So these two both run down. And they're almost parallel with the top of these. And these are very big too. And like all these joints are very thick compared to like previously. Like even this right here for the shock screw. Our sway bar link is pretty thick. And it's just, or that's actually, yeah, it's for the shock. But that's pretty, pretty fat and thick. So um, you do got the... Uh, upper and lower a arms right here and what i noticed about these if you notice it's gonna i know like i'm sorry to see it in the camera there it's probably hard to see but see this little notch right there there's little red caps that go on these factory that notch right there is to help get you a flathead in there to pop them off if these were to break now rpm states that they have a lifetime warranty if you have a receipt to prove it and if I will say this, I've personally dealt with this with RPM, and I'm not trying to bash RPM. I'm Like I say, I'm just honest with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Is if you bash your vehicle too hard, or they feel that you bashed your vehicle or drove it in their eyes, from what I've personally experienced, too aggressively or whatever to cause the part to fail, they will not warrant it. I've personally experienced that. So um, anyway, I do like RPM, just some of the stuff. You gotta be careful what you buy. Um, but yeah, and then you got the other side too. So you have to get two packages of these for the front end, and then one package of the rear, and then the mud guards if you want those. Those are, are optional. Um, now keep in mind, uh, with the Creighton, I'm gonna, you know, there's a plastic nut on this side. Let me see if I can get that in the picture for you. But there's this plastic piece right here is an eight millimeter allen the inside one the ball end the hollow ball end right in here you can't really see it on camera but it's that hollow ball end right in there that is a six millimeter just so you know um i really do recommend having an impact driver to drive those in especially on new rpm arms they're a nylon plastic instead of a traditional like composite plastic like the factory is but uh, one thing I will say about the Crate Nados is it has an awesome body, and I love how they made it. In my opinion, it looks like a Truggy. They say it's their monster truck. I'd say the Outcast is more of their monster truck, even though they state that it's a stunt truck. Um, I would say this is more of like a Truggy, Fiscal Truggy Basher, 
which I actually think it's cool to have a Trekkie Basher because the shape of this body is badass and the wing is cool. So anyway, I'm going to take the body off. Slap that down there. All right, so let's get started. So first thing, you got to take off the bumper. So you got two 2.5 millimeter screws right here. And then if you flip it over, or you kind of flip it. And yes, I do got a differential leak. I already know. If you notice, it's leaking all this fluid right here. That's from the front differential. You may not be able to see it on camera. You got 2.5 millimeter flat head screw right there. A flat taper head screws. And then you got a 4.0 millimeter screw right there and right there. So you have to remove those and pop the bumper off. I'm going to be doing that off camera. Okay, so I got the skid plate off. You gotta take out these 3.0 millimeter screws right here for the shocks. And then you gotta loosen this pillow ball right here. So you gotta loosen this, take out these. Lefty Lucy, these are a 3.0 socket head style. See how they're all square and boxy? That's called a socket head style. These are called a flat tapered screw right here. Those are a four millimeter right there. And then, uh, yeah, you gotta loosen those. One thing I will say about the Creighton is it's pretty beefcake on the truck. So anyway, you got to loosen that so you can loosen this plastic cap on the corner here. Loosen that plastic cap with an eight millimeter. You just, it doesn't take much to loosen it and you don't want to do these too tight because if you do them too tight, uh, you can't, it won't loosen very well. So or it won't, the suspension will not work properly. So what you do is you just stick it on there and you just loosen it. Just kind of get it started and you should be able to. Just do it by hand and take that off and then just kind of, I just get these snug. Like what I do is I run these into where they're like snug against the pillow ball, the steel pillow ball, and then back them off just like a quarter turn or a half turn. That's usually what I do. So this is the cap. That's what it looks like. Make sure this piece, this uh, beveled piece, goes on the inside towards the pillow ball, not the other way around. So take both these off. Now something to check with the in since it's a, this is a Horizon Hobby product, and I'll say I do like Arma, but I'll say it. I'll keep saying it. Is check these. If these screws, if these these right here are loose, you'll have a lot of slop in and out. So when you're bashing hard or driving around, you should always check these. This should be like a preventative maintenance. Now make sure that these these uh, pillow ball nuts is what I'm going to call them. Make sure they're not too tight because it'll bind up your steering and burn out your steering servo. So make sure you have them properly adjusted to where the suspension can move up and down without freely, without like moving to where like, if you get them too tight, it'll move down and it'll be too tight and it'll stay there. You know what I'm saying? Or you'll have really bad steering. Now, factory, these things do not have a good steering design. I, th I will say, Arma failed, in my opinion, and I seriously believe it. They put bushings in the steering system on a vehicle that's this heavy, 25 plus pounds, mind you. Also, it's just a bad design on this. The steering servo horn is just a junk design. I do got the Savox, uh, 500 and I think it's like 550 ounce or 60 ounce. Uh, servo. I can't remember what it is and it's like ounces of torque and I can't remember how fast it is. I think it's like 16 seconds or 15 off the top of my head. But I will say that servo does help tremendously but at the same time it does bother me how they didn't put ball bearings in and the steering bell crank design. Is, it, I don't know. I can go on and on about that but whatever. We're going to get this arms off. I'm going to take out that shock and we're going to get started on it. I'm going to loosen these pillow balls. These steel things right here. These are the pillow balls. Now make sure on the upper A arm right here, this is the upper control arm. This is the lower where the shock bolts to. Make sure that you put these washers right here on this upper one. It looks like there's three of them. There's three washers there. Okay, make sure you put those back. And then stick the pillow ball on, on the new A arm. So just something to note. Now this side's going to be the same as the other side. It's just you have a right RPM A arm and you have a left side RPM A arms. So make sure you get the right and left side. It'll stay on the packaging correctly. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one side, 
Um, I ain't going to worry about doing the other side on camera just because they really are the same thing. You just got one side versus this side. Um, that being said, I'm going to get these off. I'll get back to you. Okay, so these are the right side arms because I'm doing the right side. On your screen, you may see it as the left, but this is actually right when the vehicle's flipped over. Um, this is the part number for the right arm. Now, remember, there's a right package and a left package. I forgot to mention, mention that earlier. But yes, you'll need a right side package from RPM and a left side. So, but yeah. Luckily, these caps came right off. They slid right off, which is I'm lucky on that. Usually, they're really, they should be kind of snug. There is three washers on the upper control arm. Yes, I use that drill to get them off just because my wrists, I got tendonized to my wrists from painting as long as I've been painting for automobiles. And uh, yeah, it kind of, my wrists kind of get like pretty sore sometimes. So if you guys notice, I'm going to zoom in for you just a little bit. There's a screw right here. This is for the the upper control arm. You're gonna to want to loosen it. That's a 3.0 millimeter. Okay, take this pin out with uh, wire cutters is the best way to do it. Get a wire cutter and just pry. So imagine this as a wire cutter. You just grab it, pry, and it pulls it out. And grab it again, pry, and it pulls it out. That's what I do. You basically clamp it, pry it, clamp it, pry it, and it pulls it out real well. Unless and even if these are bent, usually it works. Unless you have a major bent one, then you got a problem. But that's a three millimeter, and then I'm gonna take that out, and then these should slide out. I still gotta take that out. Um, I'll be doing that too. Make a note. All right, everyone. So, just to give you a quick note here, I'm gonna try to zoom you in. But right here, or hold on, I don't know how well you guys can see that. But right on the back of this, right here, there's a lock nut, right, that goes right on the back here. Make sure that is not, if mine fell out, make sure you put that back because this upper suspension bolt right here threads into that. So if you lose it, you're not going to be able to, it won't thread anything. It'll slide right on out. Just quick note. Um, just want to make that note. So, um, yeah. So first thing to do with these, you got your arms out. This is what they look like. They actually feel like they're actually built really well. Like, I'm not even going to lie. So, this must be for the sway bar because I think this is the one's for the shock. Pretty sure that's for the shock. And I got a little bit of grease right there I can clean up. Make sure that when you put these in, you're threading in the pillow balls. Make sure the axle is in the slot. Make sure it's in the slot. Is if you have the axle like this, you're not gonna be able to tighten it down all the way, or it's gonna get real. It's gonna like bind up. So make sure you make sure the axles lined up there. So just a quick note. Learned that one the hard way. So these fit on there snug, which I was kind of shocked to be honest. So you just take them. It fits on there pretty snug. They don't wiggle around. The stock ones are kind of turned and wiggled around a little bit. And there's a race bike. The slop in these feel a lot better. It doesn't have as much wiggle. Um, let me put this lower suspension bolt in. Now, I'm going to try to hold that thing in there. I'm going to use the I'm going to use a drill at the moment. I'm going to bring, just trying to do it one handed is kind of tricky. So I'm going to bring down the torque setting down to a normal level. I'll probably do four. So I got it on, I got it this with an adjustable clutch, torque setting four, drill, 3.0 millimeter Allen. That's kind of a lot to. Okay, and now I'll check that by hand, of course. Also, another thing to check. Here, let me move the camera down just a little bit. This is a stub axle, okay? This is your hex, your 24 millimeter hex. This is your pin. There's a 3.0, I think. 
Yeah, there's a 3.0 grub screw in the center of this that tightens against this pin. They loosen up. It does happen. When I was taking out these ball ends, this fell apart. So what happens when they loosen up, this vibrates in there, inside there with your tire on. This can't sling out with your tire on, but it can rock a little bit, just a speck. What that does is it shatters this pin sometimes. If it shatters this pin right here, you can lose four-wheel drive and your vehicle will act fine. You, it'll be hard to figure out. You'll be like, oh, why am I only three-wheel drive all of a sudden? I can't figure it out. But what it does is it chews up this axle because the metal shards get in there and they just start chewing up this stub right here and grinding off. So trying to get this off is a real pain in the rear. Just a quick note. Just thought I'd mention that. Make sure to always check that every run. Just kind of give it a little snug. You don't have to reef it. Just give it a little... And that's all you need. So, anyway, I'm going to see if I can wipe off this grease real quick. Okay, so, I used the drill. Oh, hold on. I don't know how well you guys can see that. So, I used the drill to bring in these hollow balls. These are the steel hollow balls. I used a little bit of differential 50,000 weight differential fluid to be exact on the threads to thread this in to make it a little bit easier i don't know if it really helped it's pretty tight um so far the slop is gone in the front end like the wiggle like like the factory like look at this so this is a factory wiggle look at that i know it's hard to tell on the camera but look at this one it literally moves the vehicle so these do fit a lot tire, which is going to help steering, believe it or not. So um, anyway, I got these on, got the pin in, um, fully seated. The nice thing about these, if you notice, see this tab right here? This is a tab to stop the suspension from fully uh, coming out or whatever. So th it's gone on these. So you can literally... You can literally have your suspension sit up higher than factory. The one thing, getting the shock in between these two mount spots right here is really tight. It's actually really, really tight. I had to use a flathead and get it on top here, bring it over here, and then squeeze it, like lift this up to where like it squeezed it down in here, kind of at an angle, and then gently just kind of back and forth with a flathead on top right there, and it pushed it down. And then I used this, the Latlin right here, took it in here like that, and then Bam, straighten it out and did it like that. So now I gotta put the screw in here. I don't know how well it's gonna go in to be honest. Cause my luck probably won't line up very well for me. Maybe it will, maybe I'll be lucky. You never know. Seems like lately I haven't had the best of luck, but we'll try. moving okay clearly i don't have it lined up good enough so let's use a different allen see what the heck is going on here okay so that's all the way through so i gotta try to get this thing to thread in there there we go Logging down the drill is a smidge. But uh, yeah, so it's in there. I'm going to take my 24 millimeter hex, the pen, stick it on. It's like so. Take the pen, take the pen, and try to. Do that and then take a three millimeter allen. I'll try to do this all one handed here. So it's a three millimeter allen. Three millimeter allen. Sorry it's a little close. But Oh, it's a 2.5. My, I was wrong. It looked like a 3mm from my angle, but take a 2.5. I just had a 2.5. 
So it is a three millimeter. So I don't know what this is the deal. So the way I do these, do it one of a couple ways here. So you can see if you have a crescent wrench that's big enough, and I don't, of course. The next thing to do is to grab a tire, like that, like so. Grab a tire, take off your nut, okay? This is the best way to tighten these here. You stick this on, like so, you stick it on just like that. Suspension sags, like it probably should. Get this in there. And just give it a good old tweak in there. I turned it about an eighth of an inch. But... So that snug shouldn't hopefully fall out. Uh, be careful you don't strip them because if you strip them, you got a problem there too. But uh, yeah, this side's done. I think my shocks need to be re -blood again. Alright, so basically that is how you put the A-arms front control arms on, on a crate and us. So you got your stock there. I'm going to do this one off camera just because it is the same as this side. It's just you got your left side so um this is the right but no uh that's pretty much all there is to it and you just stick the bumper on um you know what i'm saying you got the four millimeter screws here 2.5 here uh the 2.5 that go in the threaded thing right there and voila it's done it's, it's actually not too bad really these fit snug i like that they came off nice on the factory ones i was lucky um Make sure to tighten that grub screw. It's a three millimeter. It is a three millimeter. Uh, mine might have a little grime in it to where it felt weird. I don't know. But uh, yeah, make sure you can put a little bit of oil or lube or something on the threads here. It does make it does help out. It does make it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, just make sure your suspension moves freely when you do it. See how that one moves freely and it goes back up quick. Make sure you adjust these. Just get them snug. What I do is I just get it snug by hand, like. I'll take this by hand right here. I'll screw it in until it touches this. Maybe like as t a little bit tighter by hand as I can get it. And then I back it off like a quarter of a turn. Just then, just back it off just enough for the suspension. See how easy it moves? Where it's not like I press it down and it stays here or barely moves and it just kind of stays there. I actually, you know, it moves good. So I'm going to do this other side off camera. Put the bumper on off camera. Um, with that being said, thank you guys for watching the video on the front arm. I do appreciate it. It does feel tighter. There's not nearly as much slop as a factory, um, which will help your steering. Uh, we'll see how they actually hold up right here. It looks like a little bit of a concern spot right in this joint right here, like right in here. It just looks a little bit thin to me, so I feel like maybe that might break. But other than that, they actually do look like they're built really well. Um, kudos to RPM. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, Alex RC freak out. Peace.